Hi plan friends, welcome back to the Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Okay, so this is the video companion to episode 42 of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast on how to make your own moss pole. So if you are a plant parent and maybe you've got some big climbers in your apartment like me, like this Monstera, um, a lot of our house plants that we know and love actually are climbing plants in real life, in nature, in the jungle. Plants like the Monstera actually kind of are created to climb up trees. You see those amazing photos. So as a plant parent, if you wanna kind of take your plant parenthood to the next step, making a moss pole to put in the pot of your plant that is a climber is a great way to help them feel a little bit closer to home and ideally bloom and grow a little bit better. Um, so episode 42 of the podcast, I had Tyler from the account your local plant boy. He's also the owner of Arian Botanicals. He is an unbelievable botanical bro and he walked me through how to make my own moss poles. Since our episode together I have four, I think four moss poles in my apartment and seeing how happy my plants are on them are truly unbelievable. If you listen in the podcast, um, you know, we talk about how when you put moss poles in your plants, you're gonna notice that their leaves actually are gonna get bigger as they start to climb up the moss pole instead of smaller when they kind of start trailing down without something to climb on. And I've definitely seen that with my Raphidophora tetrasperma and with the Monsteras that are on a moss pole. This one is not. So, this is a monstera that I will be repotting in another episode coming out next week. It has completely grown out of its pot. It has grown all sorts of aerial roots and it does not have a moss pole. So since I had to make one anyway, I figured I'd make one with you <laughs> and I'd bring you along my journey. So this is what I've got. Once again, tune into the podcast, check out um, Arium Botanicals and your local plant boy because he taught me everything I know. So. I ordered these bamboo poles. Also, everything I'm, uh, everything I got, I ordered on Amazon Prime, and I will link to my Amazon Prime storefront. I have a little shopping cart for you that has all the stuff if you want to do it yourself. Um, I got these moss. Uh, sorry, these are uh, bamboo stakes that are used in garden in the garden all the time. I have some clear. It can be either fishing wire. This is called invisible hanging wire. Um, I've got these little twisty tie things to put the plant on the pole to get it started. Um, and that's pretty much it. And a scissor, oh, of course. And then I have sphagnum moss that I've rehydrated in water. Um, you want nice mo uh, moist, nice moist moss for your Monstera moss pole. Um, so this is really simple. It's much simpler than you think. So let's begin. Number one, Get your fishing wire. So the only thing that like you have to think about a little bit when you're making this is um, you start the moss on the pole where the top of the soil is. So you don't have to wrap the entire pole in moss. So I'm gonna do a little quick measurement with this guy. So ideally this moss pole is going all the way into the pot to keep it sturdy from tipping over. So the top of the soil, I'm actually potting up um, but I'll just do this. It'll, it'll be fine if a little bit of the moss is under the soil. So we're going to start the pole, the, the moss at about here. I'm also doubling up because I want like a nice juicy pole for this enormous monstera. I mean, hello. Um, so to begin, you just take your fishing wire. This is also much easier done with two people, but Billy is busy and I didn't want to subject him to this. We have date night tonight, and I didn't want to make date night a moss pole making party, even though I'm sure he would have been up for that. So I'm tying this at the, I'm starting to tie this at the bottom. If you have a, th a second pair of hands, I would highly suggest it. Giving it a nice tie. So then, once you get your tie down and your measurement, you're literally just gonna start putting moss on the bamboo stakes. Yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Um, so here we are. We're gonna put moss on the bamboo stakes. 
You want to like squeeze the water out, but you'll figure that out as you go. You want to make it nice and compact. See, so I'm squeezing a lot of water out. And then you're going to take your twine and just start wrapping it. So you want to like catch as much moths as you can and start securing it to the pole. Plant friends, it is literally this simple. It's such a fun, easy DIY project. Like if you're, I always encourage my listeners, if you're feeling like you've got too many plants, start just doing projects for your plants. So you don't just, if you wanna like be doing stuff for your plant collection, like you don't always have to be bringing new plants home, why don't you make moss poles for your plants? Why don't you, um, you know, play around with fertilizers? Why don't you build, um, you know, like get like different shelving and reorganize the plants that you have? Like there's always a project to be done without having to bring new plants home if you feel like you're like in the overwhelm of, or at your like max capacity for plants. So, Tyler actually says to twist the pole, but for some reason this is just working for me right now. Looping it around. So I'm just gonna continue doing this. We'll fast forward until I get up here and then I'll show you what I do to come back down. Interrupting this fast forward because I just got the hang of Tyler's turning technique. So I put it like this and I'm turning the pole instead of my hand around it and it's actually going much smoother. So I'm gonna continue with that technique. So now I'm just putting like a nice little nubbin on the top and now we're going back down the pole. So I'm gonna put it up like this. So as you can see, the pole has not taken its exact shape yet. When you come down, that's when you can kind of catch, hold on one second, I gotta concentrate. So the top is nice. So now when I'm coming down the pole, you want to come down at like the, um, if you were like going up at 60 degrees, uh, you want to come down at 60 degrees as well. So basically you want to make little crisscrosses with the fishing wire that you went up. Now you're coming down. And this is when I can really form the pole. So I can really like see, you know, I'm looking right here. Like this was a little section that got like a little fat. I didn't wrap it in enough. So as I go down, I'm going to really pay attention to the shape of the pole and what I need to secure a little bit more to give it more of a uniform cylindrical look. And I, you know, when I had first started, I was kind of reticent to do moss holes because I thought that, I, I didn't like the way they look. Um, I thought they looked kind of wild and weird. But now that I've had them, I actually really like their look. I feel like it gives them like more of a jungle vibe in my pot. And as your plants grow, you can't even see, I have so many plants that have outgrown the moss poles, I actually have to build out extensions for them. Um, you barely even really see the moss poles, but they're making my plants really happy. So as you can see right now, I'm like catching all the little moss that I missed to make a nice, beautiful, uniform, mossy cylinder. Look at that. Oh, this feels so gratifying, like catching all the moss that you didn't get on your way up and making it this like perfectly cylindrical thing. Another thing with these moss poles is they do dry out really easily. So you're going to, um, I feel like each person's environment, like each person's apartment or home is gonna have a different level of humidity in the air. So you're just gonna have to figure out for yourself how often you need to water these guys. Um, Tyler suggested, suggests, oh, can't talk and do something. See, so here I could use a little bit more moss, so I'm just gonna throw a little bit more on the side. Um, so I spritz my poles when I remember, Billy really enjoys spritzing them as well. And another thing that I found, if you are careful, you can actually water your poles. So when I go to water my plants, 
if I have my watering can that has a thin neck, uh, a thin like little neck, I will actually, once again, gotta wait, okay. Let me stop to do this. So anyway, here's my done. I'm just gonna tie off the string at the bottom. So to water the poles, I take a spritz. You can either take a spritzer and spritz your moss pole probably every day. They do dry out pretty quickly. Or what you can do is, um, if I'm water, so say this pole is in my plant. I have a watering, um, I have a little watering can with a skinny neck. So I'll actually start at the top of the pole and I'll just put a little bit of water at the top and I'll watch the moss absorb that water. Then if I continue watering, little trickles, this, is, this requires a lot of patience, you'll see the water actually trickle down. <laughs> this looks a little insane what I'm doing. Um, you'll see the water trickle down the pole and then the rest of the moss under it will slowly absorb it. So I'll water my moss poles when I remember. Um, you just wanna be careful that you don't end up overwatering your plants. So if you are gonna water your moss poles, you have to be patient. Take your time, enjoy the meditative process of just watching get transfixed by just watching this moss that gets very dry, absorb the water. I really like doing that. So those are two ways, but I would say if you're starting out, maybe just stick to spritzing when you remember with a little spritzer. Okay, I am going to tie this off and that is essentially making your own moss pole. Then you wanna make sure to stick it in the bottom of the pot. That's really uh, important, getting it rooted in the bottom of the pot so it doesn't tip over. And then um, make sure that you subscribe to my channel because next week I'll be releasing my Monstera repotting video and that's where you'll see me actually put the moss pole in my pot and secure the Monstera to it. But essentially, if you're looking to do it right now, you want that instant gratification, you're gonna stick the pole in the pot, plant the pot up with it. You wanna get the pole close to the middle of the pot as possible, but make sure that you don't stick this in the drainage hole because that will go right through. Um, pot it up, make sure it's nice and supported, and then you can take little twisty ties. That's what I do. You can um, use more fishing line, you can use string to start supporting your plant on the pole. And then once the plant adjusts and it starts to absorb that moisture that comes off of the evaporation of the moss, it'll start growing aerial roots and it'll actually attach itself to the pole on its own, which is totally wild. And you will see your plants start to grow up the pole. You'll see their leaves get larger. You'll see these amazing aerial, where you normally just see a node, you'll see actual aerial roots pop out of the plant. It is the coolest experience. I can't recommend it enough. And if you do make moss poles, please tag me. Show me what you're making. Show Tyler at your local plant boy what you're making. We've seen so many people make poles off of the podcast episode and it's been so fun to see where your plants are climbing. So the all of the materials for this are in the show notes. The podcast episode is in the show notes. I'd highly suggest giving it a listen. Make sure you follow Tyler. His info is in the show notes as well. And until next time, plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Doom, 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 doom,